A very good day to Sir Asan. Today we are going to present our business plan. Uh, our company, Forty Creamery Sanyam Berhad, is basically producing ice cream with, um, with real fruits without adding any artificial components that to increase the flavor of the ice cream. So I will start with the executive summary. So people nowadays are more concerned at their health and started to consume more nutritious and healthy food. Therefore, our company aims to provide ice cream that are made of real fruit that will provide multiple uh, health benefits. And our target market is the student as ice cream lovers are mostly kids and young adults. We located our company at Sedang, Selango because it's near to our target market, which is the students. So there are a lot of stu um, school University and neighborhoods at Sada, resulting in high density of potential customers. Our biggest threat is the big companies due to their well-recognized product, so it will be quite difficult for us to attract new customers to buy our product. Thus, we will conduct a productive strategy to encounter threats we may face in the later days. Our management team consists of individuals that are proficient in their field and competent to expand the influence of our company effectively. So we have uh, 100,000 as a startup capital, which will require a payback period of 28.39 months, according to the cash flow. So the re revenue of our company is estimated to be around 300,000 in the first year, with a if an increase of increase every subsequent year. Our aim is to become the top ice cream manufacturer and promote this product to every con every corner of the world. Our company has three objectives. Firstly, it is to produce highly nutritious ice cream using local Malaysian fruits to fulfill the customer needs. Secondly, it is to attract more, more customers and achieve more product fits as we produce a good quality of product and gains our customer confidence. Lastly, it is to create new products and innovate them using the latest available technology. Our company vision is to strive to be the world leading manufacturer with excellent quality of products to fulfill the world population needs. Well, the mission is to be the best world-class ice cream manufacturer in Malaysia by providing the top quality products. So there are three keys to success. Firstly, is um, to pro offer high quality product at fair price. Our company uses the finest quality of seasonal fruits to provide optimal experience in taste as well as nutrition. The second key, key to success is Utilize the creative marketing strategy to attract the customer. For example, the marketing team utilizes social media such as Instagram and Facebook to promote the product. And thirdly, do service constantly for all the manufacturers. This helps preventing our equipment from broken and also help to save off the cost of repairing and avoid the consequences of shortage in production. So next, we'll look into the company summary. The first part will be the company ownership. Our company established in April 2019 by Mr. Muhammad Asman, registered from University of Oxford. And um, this company is a private limited company and is registered with companies' houses and is issued with a certificate of incorporation. So the chairman of our company is Mr. Muhammad Asman. And the CEO will be Ms. Ashley Sodachen, um, while the resource manager will be the Ms. Nor Natasha. And Mr. Moaz will be our marketing manager, and Ms. Nor Atika will be our secretary executive. So next will be the company history. Our company was founded in April 2019 by Mr. Muhammad Asman. So he found a business opportunity as he noticed the ice cream in the market are added with artificial food flavorings and colorings instead of real foods. So he innovated a few types of ice cream with real natural tropical fruit flavorings. And it turned out that the fruit 
tea ice cream was a good hit and this encouraged him to put more efforts in this business and start more research to increase the quality and flavor of the ice cream. So for the next five years, the company has had a steady growth and managed to gain a reputation for the quality service. Our company is located at Lot 543 DA Jalan SK 12 slash 1 43400 Sedang Selangor, Malaysia. So this location is strategic as it is near to our current market which are students. Um, there are a few facilities such as aircons, freezers, computer, CCTV machines, blender and cleaning supplies. Supplies. Hi, my name is Muaz, and I now I'm going to present you about the market analysis summary. This topic consists of five subtopics, which we, the first will be the situation analysis, uh, market trends target market segmentation, market analysis, and lastly, SWOT analysis. So now I'm going to explain to you about the situation analysis, analysis which means how we think that the current situation is, will, uh, is the reason, uh, will be the reason for us to start business. Uh, so I'm going to, first. the first reason will be that we know that people love eat ice, loves to eat ice cream so average people will eat it maybe once or twice per month so it will make uh, the market very big because people uh, like to eat it so the second reason we also want to provide a healthy ice cream to the people as we know that ice cream are a no, uh, a not a good uh, food because it, it is low in nutrient low, uh, contain high sugar and also may contain preservative so now we i'm going to explain to you about the opportunity available in this uh, current situation which uh, we which we motivate us to uh, join this business so the first opportunity that we uh, we notice is that people start to eat uh, more healthy food i'm sorry people start to take more healthy food into their diet so which means that they start to worry about their health so due, because of our ice cream is a healthy ice cream they can uh, enjoy ice cream while taking care of their health so the second opportunity that we notice is that uh, due to the unfavorable state of economy of our nation it will uh, it will make it make us eager to join this business because in order for us to improve a falling economy we the entrepreneur will be the best solution for it we're going to move on to the second subtopic which is the market trends which mean the trends that happen in the market so we will gonna do some of uh, of it or uh, some of it uh, so the first one it will be we will do online business uh, which mean that we will uh, do business online we will take order online maybe via whatsapp and maybe if the government or any office want to order our ice cream they will email it for, to us and we will accept the order they are order they are order but we will we will only do it in a large quantity which means that if the customer want to order maybe just a two or three ice cream we will not accept their order because we want to maximize our profit and by set up a, a maximum limit which is a minimum limit which is 20 ice cream, it will make, uh, make us able to generate a uh, uh, good profit. So, for the second trend that we will use will be that we will do a company social media account. So, we can up, uh, always update uh, all our latest information in our social media account and our customer can check it uh, at our social media account so it will make us always in touch with our customer so we will be closer to them so for the third uh, trends that we will use will be the online marketing as our main marketing strategy we know that nowadays people always uh, play their phones and they always to check their social media accounts check their facebook check their twitter so by doing uh, our marketing online 
as our main marketing strategy we can uh, attract people to try our product and to support our product so we will also do the maybe the old fashion style which is the, which is the poster but we will only do it in a small quantity as we find it not uh, really relevant right now because nowadays people doesn't want to take any poster anymore as they find it troublesome to them so we we will do this uh, online marketing as our strategy maybe we will do a uh, facebook ads we will do uh, e poster and blast it uh, through whatsapp and our customer can read our poster and they, they will know of our assistance so they will try to tr our they will try our product and they will i'm uh, i am 100 percent sure they will love our product so that's it for the market trend okay, we will continue with the third sub topic which is the target market segmentation in now uh, we uh we decided to divide our potential customers as uh, two three segment which is the students kids and b40 group so we know that serdang consists of many education institutes they have many school at many school and university at there so it make us realize that that student will be our prime uh prime target as our potential customer we know that students like to eat ice cream they eat ice cream as their snack they will eat it during their break after school especially when the situation are not uh, not uh, are unfavorable for them maybe the weather uh weather is uh, is sunny maybe their parent came late uh, they will so they would have to wait um more and what maybe while waiting uh, for the bus while walking to your home they will eat ice cream during that time so it is very relevant for us to call that student will be our main target as our potential customers so the second segment which is the kids we know that kids eat a lot of ice cream they maybe eat it maybe three times two to three times per week so uh because ice cream are uh, their favorite snacks we know it by because when we go to petrol pump with our little brother and we offer it uh any food that they want they will for sure choose ice cream as their first choice so it is suitable for us to category kids as our potential customer so for the third segment which the b40 group we know that b40 group is a group of people which their average income is three thousand and is lower than three thousand, which means they are not in the position where they can buy any food that they want, because they always need to refer to the price first before they buy it, before they buy it. So we will be the solution for them because we know that people love ice cream, so we provide a cheap ice cream but a very quality, a very we buy with uh, very quality and a uh, quality ice cream so <clears throat> we will be the solution for them as we they can buy ice cream while saving by saving their money to buy anything else so b40 is our is very uh, very relevant for us to category A as our potential customers okay, uh, so we move on to the fourth subtopic which is the market analysis we uh, divide it into four category which is the first category is geography uh, demography behavior and psychography so for the first category which is the geography we choose Selangor as our first state to start our business because Selangor is the most uh, developed and stable state at Malaysia. Uh, uh, next, we choose Serdang as our uh, to start business because Serdang has a number, a high number of population, and the majority of people that live there are Malay. So we know that Malay love ice cream Malaysia. And uh, thirdly, 
uh, the average people that live at Serdang have a lower average income than other people that live at the other city at Selang, in Selangor. So we want to target them because we target B40 group as our potential customer so we will make Sedang as it will it is relevant for us to do business at Sedang. So the second is the demography which is we will ta uh, target the people uh, who is who is 7 to 15 years old as our target audience we will make a student as our main target main we will target student as our uh, main potential customer and we will make a uh, target Malay as our target risk for our product so the third is the behavior of our of our customer we it, it, it will be the group of people that love to eat ice cream and it will also the people that want to eat ice cream but want to buy it at the best price so for the uh, fourth category will be the psychography which uh, which is we which how we can attract people to buy our product so we will check them by profit provide them with the most and most affordable and relevant price for our ice cream because we know that fruit ice cream are out there are expensive than other ice cream and by uh, and secondly we will provide a safe and quality product our pro our product will have the halal jakim certificate and it will it also uh, will be will have the label of HACCP so it will make the customer confident with our product so that's it for the market analysis so we're going to continue with the last subtopic which is the SWOT analysis SWOT analysis refers to strengths weaknesses threats and opportunity so we already uh, do this analysis so we already know our strength our weaknesses and our threat our opportunity so now i'm going to explain to you about the, the strength first so for our main strengths it will be our price because we sell uh, fruit ice cream at a lower price than other company products so secondly um, we we know that ice cream Malaysia have a is the all-time favorite for some people because they uh, used to eat it during their childhood so they will be a loyal buyer to us because we provide ice cream Malaysia to them and we know that ice cream Malaysia right now is uh, start to is hard to find so we will be the solution for their problem to get the ice cream Malaysia so for the third strength it will be that it will be uh, we decided to start the business uh, in the ice cream sector because we we know that ice cream can be produced in a large quantity so we can sell it in large quantity and we also can make the profit in a large uh, in we can make the we can make a large profit so now i'm going to explain about the weaknesses so the first weaknesses uh, it will be hard for us to maintain the quality of the product because ice cream is a uh, milk based product and milk can become a waste in a short period so it will be hard for us to maintain the quality so the second weaknesses it will be that the high competition in the market because we know that there are many company ice cream company in the market so we will have to compete with all of them so for the third weaknesses it will be hard for us to maintain to get a consistent fruit supply because some of our fruit flavor are a seasonal food seasonal, seasonal fruit so maybe during the time that uh, we will find it hard to get the supply because uh, due to the seasonal fruit so now I'm going to explain about our opportunity the first opportunity it will be that uh, we know that the ice cream uh, I'm sorry 
it will be the big market itself because we know that everyone uh, eat ice cream so it will uh, it, quite, it give us a very big market so they uh, and it also because of there are no age, age restriction in this market because everyone is uh, ice cream maybe uh, kids eat ice cream and an elder eat, uh, eat ice cream so the market is very big so for the second opportunity it will be that our company can expand at a fast rate because uh, we we are in a food sector and we know that a food sector can expand quickly if they if they work properly and their product is a quality and uh, have a relevant price i'm sure that we can we do to that we can expand quickly because of our quality and our price so now i'm going to explain to you the last category which is our threats our biggest threats it will be that the rivalry of the big companies be, uh, like nestle walls they already have uh, a lawyer buyers because some people use uh, already uh, love the taste of their walls and cannot move on of uh, to another brand so it will find it will be challenging for us to attract new customer to try our product because they are loyal to the other brands so so uh, the uh, rivalry it will be hard for us to fight with the Nestle and the walls uh, so and other other big companies so for the second threat, it will be that the destruction of our product during the production because we know that uh, accident can happen anytime so maybe during our production uh, the ice cream we the big number of our product will be destroyed maybe due to the malfunction of our machine so for the the third uh, threat it will be uh, if we do not market our product properly, there are a, lot, a high possibilities that we will suffer a great loss because we produce it in a large quantity. But if we ca cannot sell it, it uh, we will uh, we will have to suffer a great loss due, due to the cost of the production doesn't tally with the profit that we make. So that's that's it for the threats. So. We, after we do the SWOT analysis and we have already determined our strength, our weaknesses and our our opportunity and our threat, we have already started our next move, which we make a productive plan to counter all of our weaknesses and all and to improve our weaknesses. So if we have already we also have already started uh, to design a plan to maximize our strength and our profit in order for us to excel in this uh, in this field by using all our all of our advantage and to strive forward so one of the plan that we decided to make is uh, we will conduct a very strategic marketing strategy that we are positive be able to attract many customers to tr to support our product so that's it for the SWOT analysis uh, i hope you enjoy it, my explanation Thank you for listening and enjoy, enjoy the rest of the video. Yang lain. Jadi uh, saya akan sambung untuk pembentangan Miss Business Plan our, for our company, the Fruity Creamery Company. So basically this is uh, our example of product. Nampak dia macam ice cream yang diisi dengan isi buah-buahan yang sebenar. Biasa kita jumpa um, ice cream Malaysia uh, dalam bentuk cordial bekukan, lepas tu kita bekukan, lepas tu jual. Lepas tu orang beli dan hisap-hisap habis. Tapi our company, saya sangat yakin bahawa um, produk kami dapat berdaya maju kerana saya yakin bahawa produk ni uh, dia lain daripada lain. Lumrah manusia dia suka benda yang lain daripada lain. Benda yang menarik, benda yang kreatif. Jadi, um, kelainan dia, kelainan our ice cream, this, this ice cream, is um, biasa, ice cream Malaysia yang biasa tu, kita kan dia just cordial kan, tak ada apa-apa dalam tu kan. Kita just, uh, lepas makan, habis. Isai-isai-isai-isai, habis. 
Tapi our product bila kita isi isi isi, pas kita nak gigit juga isi isi buah ni. Kita dapat zat sekali. Selain daripada uh, kalau ice cream Malaysia yang biasa tu, kita gula. Okey, kita dapat zat uh, zat zat proses buah-buahan kan jadi kordilan. Dia dapat sikit je nutrients. Jadi ni percentage nutrients buah-buahan segar tu dia lebih tinggi. Jadi uh, ia menepati our uh, marketing strategi untuk orang-orang yang suka makan buah tapi dalam masa yang sama dia nak makan ice cream. Ice cream kan dia macam kurang sihat tapi um, buah-buahan dia macam uh, hasil yang lebih tinggi. Tapi bila orang dah suka, kita create lah satu benda yang dua dalam satu. Okay. Jadi um, uh, selain uh, itu, mengapa saya katakan uh, produk saya, produk kami uh, berdaya maju kerana salah satu tujuannya adalah untuk mewartakan ice cream Malaysia. Yang ice, apabila semua orang kenal ice cream Malaysia ni, semua orang akan mengaitkan negara Malaysia. Ya, dia akan menyumbang sedikit, sedikit sebanyak kepada nama negara. Okay. Um, secara logiknya kita fikir. Um, um, Ice cream Malaysia kalau tanya kat negara lain orang kenal ke? Macam tak kenal kan. Jadi uh, salah satu salah satu sebab kecilnya uh, our company create this product um, is for uh, mewartakan ice product ice cream Malaysia ke ke uh, lingkungan yang lebih besar. Sebab itulah kita create ice cream Malaysia yang lain daripada lain supaya dia lebih luas a uh, consumer a uh, consumer yang consume our product ni dia lebih luas dan tersebar ke seluruh dunia tidak tiad, tidak ada yang mustahil okey uh, okey in the future in the future our company is um, plan for create more product based on fresh fruit for example ice blended um, pickles jeruk-jeruk buah yang orang suka makan tu That's all for our group. That's all for marketing strategies and list of our product. And yeah, thank you. Assalamualaikum and very good morning. So today, uh, for my part, I will start with the marketing summary. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay. Uh, for in the first slide, we can see the organization chart. So in this organization chart, the first, uh, the one that the top, the most top is the Uh, chairman and continued by the C chief executive officer which is CEO then followed by the resource manager marketing manager and also the secretary executive of this office okay let's move on to the next slide okay now uh, I will talk about the management team for uh, in the management team the first one is the chairman so the chairman is actually the one that uh, that owns the company They promote the highest standard of the company in the board level. Uh, they also oversee the company from time to time to make sure the company does not stray from its parts. Okay, uh, and also both according to the uh, what the boards want. The, uh, the chairman also develop the overall vision of the company that the company has to follow. Now let's move on to the next one, which is the Chief Executive Officer, which is CEO. So CEO is actually the one that makes the highest decision in the company that will impact it overall. Uh, they are the one that oversee the company day to day to make sure the company move accordingly without any problem. And if there is any problem, the they will solve the problem with their staff. Now, uh, the third one is the secretary executive. So, the secretary executive is actually the one uh, that makes sure the company run smoothly. They are the one that helps the CEO the most by planning all the meetings among the staff and also the CEO with the other, with other company. Okay, uh, they are the one that maintain the overall database of this company. Uh, the first or the first one is the marketing manager. So the marketing manager is the one that try to attract and publicize the company and product to the public eye. They create promotion and also try uh, try to identify the customer by using surveys. 
and promotes to the right customer promotes the product to the right customer okay now let's move on to the last one which is the resource manager so the resource manager is the one that responsible for assigning the right staff for the right project they they assign the best project to the uh, with a good staff that can do it properly okay uh then uh the human resource manager is also the one that tries to that recommends the new policies appro approaches of the companies to the ceo or also the marketing manager okay now let's talk a bit about the production and processing of the company so uh, from the production parts, we can know there is a raw in ingredients, labor, and also the expenses per serving. So raw ingredients is the one that we use, ingredient that we use to make the product, and the labor is the stuff that we need to uh, make the product or buy the ingredients, and so on. And lastly, the expenses per serving is the uh, money that we need to prepare the product fully, or in in other words, it's, it's the cost of the cost of the product. Okay, in this next slide, uh, we will talk about the method of production and services. So, firstly, we collect the ingredients, then clean up the ingredients properly. After that, we start to prepare the product, and then package the product into the plastic. After packaging the product properly, uh, we place the label, which is the sticker that we com our company have then move move the all the product to the frozen storage after like, letting it froze for 4 to 5 hours we start to box the product and then deliver it to the shop that will sell the product ok now let's move on to the next slide ok so now let's uh, let's talk about the product benefit so in the product benefit uh, product benefit there is actually the actual benefit and also the perceived benefit the actual benefit is the actual benefit of the product that will the, the customer will receive while the perceived product is what the customer thinks that will they will receive according to what they see and what they what the product images ok uh, now let's move on to the next slide ok now in this slide we will talk about the quality control so firstly it is the employees hygiene so according to employee hygiene we need to maintain uh, the highest standard for uh, for our complete uh, employee hygiene we will use uh, we will make sure the employee use the apron for, uh, use disposable gloves and also follows the seven step hand washing rule next we uh, is the equipment so for the equipment we make sure to cleanse and sterilize the equipment after the production is finished and also we make sure to maintenance it every for every two days the tools for every two days to make sure that the tools are always in a good condition okay now let's move on to the next slide so in this slide is the last one the operation services so according to operation services we firstly our operation services will firstly start uh, in the opening session we will start to prepare the ingredients that we collect then after that we, we will start to prepare and package the product around 10 a.m after the, after the preparation and packaging finish we start uh, we place it in the frozen storage when we wait until around 5 to 6 hours before start to boxing and deliver the, deliver the product around 5 uh, pm we will start to do our closing by cleaning the production room and also cleansing the tools Assalamualaikum and a very good day to Azham so today i will explain about the financial plan so, I will explain about the cash flow, starting with revenue. So, what is revenue? Revenue is the total amount of income generated by the sale of the goods or specifically by the sale of our product, which is fruity, fruity creamery related to our company's operations. So, basically, as we can see in the cash flow, it shows our long-term plan of our business in producing and selling our product, which is Fruity Creamery. Started from revenue, so we are selling total of 4 flavors, which are apple, strawberry, honeydew and also mangoes. 
So as mentioned by my previous business member, our first factory is located at Serdang Selangor, which is also a strategic place that have many populations uh, that have many numbers of populations. Besides, Serdang also have a lot of education institutions such as universities and also schools. So according to this, our first target is students. As there are many students in that place, we decided to sell or to produce huge amounts of ice creams with varieties of flavors. As we can see in the cash flows during our first year, we, pros we produce a large quantities of ice creams for three flavors, which we supplied to school and also to universities in Serdang. Since our product is very cheap, it is really affordable for students to buy it. As for the third to five years, we increase the price for maximum at 70 cent on the fifth year of proceeding our business. So the quantity in packets of each flavor is also being increased. Thus, the total revenue calculated increases from year 1 to year 5 of, pro of proceeding our business. As for the fourth year, our company started to produce another one flavors, which is honeydew. Not to forget, our product is not only targeting the students, but also the kids and also B40 group. Since our product is a very nutri nutritious food product, which we provided a healthy ice cream, people will tend to buy it in order to have a tasty and healthier food in their diet. So, moving on to the cost. So, the cost. So, cost are the expenses associated with the maintenance and, and administration of a business on a day-to-day -day basis. So the total cost of the total operating cost for a company includes the cost of goods sold, operating expenses as well as overhead expenses. As for the annual stock here, as for the annual stock of Apple, which we, which we know, apple is an imported uh, fruits, so that the price is a bit pr is a bit higher compared to the other fruits. So, the three the other three fruits, which is strawberries, honeydews, and also mangoes, are all local fruits. But strawberry fruits is a bit higher in cost compared to mango. So basically, as we can see here, during year 3 of proceeding our business, the rental of factory is increasing. This is because our company started to improve the size of uh, the factory, which because uh, since that our business is expanding year by year, so we need more space or maybe we need more machines in producing our products uh, even more so we also targeted on that on the three year of preceding our business our product has been supplied to almost the whole state of Selangor so during the year 4 we started to supply our products to many other states and we also had started to open our shop our own shop in Selangor we decided to open our shops in the states near Selangor also, for example, Negeri Sembilan and Malacca. For the fifth year, we will expand our business by open our shops, open some shops on other states other than states that is near Selangor. So moving on to the depreciation. So depreciation is the it is 
it represents how much of an asset's value has been used up for that one particular business. So basically, uh, our assets is machine. So as we can see, accumulated depreciation is increasing year by year. So proceeding with base study. So base study. Moving on to the EBT, EBT state, uh, EBT stands for earnings before tax. It measures the company's financial perf performance. So the EBT of company increased year by year. So we got tax of twenty six percent. Okay, EAT. EAT is uh, earnings after tax that we calculated of EBT multiplied with the 20% of the tax. Next is NCF which stands for net cash flow. It shows the incremental uh, EAT plus depreciation expenses resulting from the investment of the business. So PV which stated that discount rate is 10%. So PV, uh, PV stated that the higher the discount rate of the future cash flows, the lower the PV of the future cash flows. Moving on to the P cumulative PV. Moving on to the NPV. NPV is the difference between the present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows over a period of time. It is used to analyze the profitable investment or the project. So IRR. IRR is, to, is used to estimate profitability of potential investment which we estimated for our business. For our IRR is 40%. So the payback period, payback period is the amount of time used to recover the cost of the investment of our business. So we calculated uh, for our payback period is approximately for two years. So below is the assumptions which net investment is 100,000. This count rate is stated over is 10% and also the tax is 26%. That is all from me. Thank you. Next, I, um, I will look into the conclusion. So, in conclusion, we hope to become the top uh, three manufacturer and deliver a quality product in a cons consistent and timely manner in order to have the customer return again for another satisfying and flavorsome treat. And we also hope to earn a reasonable return on an initial investment. With the systematic management, we expect the employee productivity to develop in the future. From the marketing management, we will make survey and research to get information about this business, ensure a good strategy and target in order to compete with other competitors in the business field. So we are confident that we are able to gain financial support from Max and shareholders due to our steady growth of companies. Thank you. Okay, now uh, before we finish our presentation, I want to talk about will be the future of the future plan of ours. So, firstly, I want to talk about the market. So, our, uh, our plan is to make the market bigger. We want to distribute to further places. So, firstly, uh, like uh, for example, now now we start at around the shop nearby our houses then we will try to distribute it to schools around the street and start to make grow it around the country then lastly we want to start import the ice cream product to other country that's making it uh, reach out more places uh, secondly uh, we also plan to make variety of this product not just the ice cream only so for example now we are doing 
fruit ice cream maybe after this we will doing we we'll doing ice blended fruit fruit ice blended pickles maybe anything related to fruits and ice so uh, i think that's all from us thank you